How often do you mindlessly use your phone? I check my phone pretty regularly, I'd say. We are all watching screens a lot more. Social media and dopamine hit after dopamine So you're more likely to act impulsively. I want my phone! The average person spends six to seven hours a day on social media. That's a full-time job. That's enough time to build a business, learn a new language, and achieve anything you want. But infinite scrolling is a lot more harmful than just waste of time. It's actually completely destroying your willpower, motivation, and focus. In the 1970s, American psychologist, Dr. Bruce Alexander did an experiment. He placed rats alone in a cage with two options, a bottle filled with water and a bottle laced with cocaine. And he proved that the rats would repetitively drink from the drug-laced bottle until they all overdosed and died. They would stop exercising, stop procreating, and only focus on getting that next dopamine hit. And the problem here is that you are the lab rat in this experiment. Before I discovered how to optimize my social media usage, I struggled a lot with focus. I'd barely be able to finish the entire book, was diagnosed with ADHD, and found it difficult to do hard focus work. It wasn't until I began to study the patterns of addiction that I saw the impact that social media was having on my focus, and I even discovered a foolproof way to optimize social media usage. Not only did I regain the time lost from mindless scrolling, I functionally cured my ADHD, developed actual focus, and began to achieve all the goals that I set up for myself. I was even able to learn Japanese to fluency inside a year with all the time and focus that I gained back. So if you were like me and you want to optimize your focus and regain back your time, here are five steps to completely eliminate phone addiction and infinite scrolling. The first step is to eliminate the root enemy, algorithmic feeds. Behind every app on your phone are hundreds of millions of dollars in engineering, design, and constant iteration. It all started right here with this man, Azar Raskin. In 2006, he was frustrated with having to click through multiple pages when he entered a simple Google search. So as a UX designer, he thought of a new innovation. What if you could just scroll forever? And so he shared it on his blog and some people started adding it to their blog too. But behind the scenes, social media giants were quietly paying attention. You see, around this time, they were struggling to grow. People simply weren't using their websites enough. To survive, they needed to raise money from venture capitalists who only looked at one metric, the amount of time users spent on their platform. The more time they spent, the better the product. So these companies poured millions of dollars hiring not just engineers and designers, but also psychologists who understood the mechanisms of addiction. And they created a genius design with only three simple components. Number one, infinite scroll. Number two, pull to refresh. Emulate a casino where you literally don't know what you'll see next. And number three, the algorithmic feed. Each user sees a personalized feed with just the content that keeps them on the platform. They found that with just these three things, they were not only able to keep users coming back, it got them totally hooked. The point of the story is to understand that algorithmic feeds are the core of the problem. Without it, the entire system fails to be addictive. It's not individual posts or videos, but it's the feed itself that's keeping you coming back. And so the most important important thing and the first step is to just remove algorithmic feeds entirely. When you're first starting out, there's no such thing as moderation. And believe me, I watched a lot of videos on this topic and a lot of people recommend short-term solutions like dopamine detoxing. These aren't long-term solutions. We aren't doing a 30-day challenge or a dopamine detox. We're creating a permanent solution to phone addiction. If you just think about it, the solution to drug addiction is not a 30-day dopamine detox. It's to just eliminate it completely. And you really want to make it impossible for you to access on your phone. I have an iPhone. What I do is I use screen time and I take all these social media apps and I set the timer to one minute and then I had my girlfriend set up a code so I What's wouldn't that? be able to access it. What? <laughs> I need the password. Yeah, type in the password. And because the password? I had that set up, I literally had to ask her physically to type in the code for me to use social media. Highly recommend doing this. Just set up a code, have someone else type in the password. After a while, you can even create a social media schedule where you only have access to these apps at certain times of the day. But I wouldn't recommend doing this until you've blocked down your phone completely for at least six months to a year. So after you remove algorithmic feeds, the bulk of the temptation to use your phone will be gone. But you'll still be hooked because a big part of phone addiction is stuff like responding to messages, looking up random stuff, and just apps that give you notifications to hook you in. So the next step is quite important and it's something I actually learned from addiction experts. So step number two, change your environment. In 1971, the U.S. government found out that over 35% of their service members in Vietnam had tried heroin, and over 20% were addicted. I went to Vietnam in September of 1969, and during the time that I was there, I went through certain experiences that led me into using drugs. So the U.S. government hurried and created this special task force to help 
rehabilitate these soldiers as they came back home. But what they found out was that when they came back, 90% of the soldiers who use heroin in Vietnam completely eliminated their addiction overnight. And the simple reason for this was that in Vietnam, they were easily surrounded by these cues for drug use. But when they returned home, the cues disappeared. And so the habit did as well. So to change your environment on your phone, you want to reorganize your home screen to be as minimal as possible. Only put the things you want to use on your home screen. I literally only use my phone as a utility device. It serves no other purpose. And so the only thing I see on my phone are maps, messaging, books, podcasts, and notes. You also want to turn off all your notifications except for messages. Basically, no app should send you random notifications throughout the day. Combined with the last step, you will now associate your phone as a utility device and not a dopamine machine. If you set up the previous step correctly, it should now also be nearly impossible for you to use social media. After setting this up, I found that I already had a dramatically different relationship with my phone. But during periods of focus, I still had the temptation to pull my phone to see if I missed a message or even check the time, which absolutely destroys your focus. Research has shown that the act of task switching, like something as simple as even responding to a message, takes an average of 23 minutes for you to regain back your focus. And so the next step is crucial for entering deep states of flow while working, which will make it super easy and enjoyable for you to accomplish tasks. So step three is to make it hard to use. Imagine you love playing this retro arcade game but they only have it all the way across town. It takes you an hour to drive there, and even then you have to wait in line and you have to pay $20 to play it. It doesn't matter how addictive the game is, you probably won't play it every single day. That's because there's additional layers of friction to getting that dopamine hit. So when you're working, you wanna make it intentionally difficult for you to use your phone, emulating the retro arcade game. But to give you an idea of some things I've tried, here are three ways to increase difficulty with using your phone. Number one is to reverse your phone case. This is one of my favorite ways on the go, I'll just, take my phone and, and I'll put the case inside out. And that makes it so when I pull my phone out, I'll remember that I'm trying to be more intentional about my phone use. Number two, put your phone in your car. The easiest way is just to put it in another room, but when I really need to focus, I'll put my phone in my car, which makes it really tedious if I wanna check it while I'm working. Number three is to buy a lockbox. So a more extreme and fast way is to use a kitchen lockbox. That way, you're only exerting your willpower once, and it becomes very difficult for you to use your phone. And a bonus tip is to also don't sleep in the same room as your phone. If you have quick access to your phone, it's more likely that you'll start to check your notifications, respond to messages, and then you have your phone controlling your focus rather than the other way around. Okay, so now that you've done these three steps, you'll find that you have a lot more time on your hands, especially when you're out and about, in line, or just waiting for something. During those times, you'll still reach for your phone, but you'll find that there's nothing there, which leads me to the next step to use an alternative. In neuropsychology, researchers discovered an effective way to break bad habits, and it's called implementation intentions. The way that they explain it is that you basically create a horse race of cognitive pathways, which just means that you create multiple alternatives for the bad habit. It's the same reason why it's recommended that smokers replace their habit with nicotine gum or to drink decaf coffee if you're trying to quit caffeine. And so you basically just wanna have alternatives to social media usage. What I do is I basically bring around a notepad or e-reader. I still use the notes and books app on my phone, but I still find it to be really useful to use a dedicated e-reader or write in an actual journal. If you've ever seen this guy, James Schultz, during the pandemic, he live streamed studying for 12 hours a day, every single day for over a year. You could even see everything that was on his computer screen. I got to talk to him a while back and I asked him what his secret was for this monk-like discipline and focus. The first thing he told me was quitting social media, and the second is actually using old school technology. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of technology right here. This bad boy is a Sony PVM. All the tech that he uses is retro. It's mostly because he just likes the look of it, but it also serves as an additional friction to addictive applications. He actually uses a flip phone most of the time, which makes it pretty hard to contact him. And it's one of the key ways he can stay focused without any distractions for over 10 hours a day. When he goes out, he also uses this e-reader that's basically the same form factor as his phone. And that just makes it easier and less friction for him to read books on the fly. The next step, is the final boss and is actually the one that would tie everything together and that's to optimize your computer so solving this problem on your phone is actually only the first part of the solution you also want to optimize your computer in a similar way and to do that i use two apps on my computer the first is called freedom and i also use this on my phone to create a schedule for social media usage the hardest website for me to block is youtube because i feel like i still learn a lot from youtube watching interviews podcasts even tutorials. But I found that if you block the algorithmic feed, the addictive nature of it naturally goes away. 
The second is called cold turkey, and it allows you to create a lock on your computer. So I have a setup where I get locked out of my computer at 9 p.m. and I literally can't log back in, forcing me to go to bed. I also do a similar thing with screen time on my phone. But if you find that it's difficult to follow through with these steps, it might be because of low willpower due to problems with sleep. I made a video about the biggest sleep myths that might be ruining your sleep. You can check it out here if you want. So I'll see you over there. Bye.